Mm. Marie, thank you so much for having a chat with us. Pleasure. Is that the term big data? A lot of people might not know what that actually means. So what does yeah. big data actually mean? You know, it's one of these buzzwords, big data. <laughs> um, it actually means data sets or bits of information that are so large that you actually need, need a computer or a machine to analyze them. So let me give you an example. Okay. Say for example, you wanted to track a hashtag, which is a massive hashtag. It's got millions of uses on Twitter. You need a machine to analyze that to find out where most people are using that tweet from, okay. whether they're male or female, all that kind of stuff. Because you, there's so much information. You couldn't physically go in and do it as a human being yeah. yourself because it's just millions of them. What we've done in the documentary is we've looked at the issue of big data and digital footprint, you know, your privacy, your mm. cyber security, but also how data is being used for the good of our health, for example, or in agriculture, lots of different ways data is working for good and for bad. Because this is something that affects us every day, it's something that we should educate ourselves on this, shouldn't we? Absolutely, and I think, you know, all of these new tools that are coming on stream all the time, they're fun to use. Let's take Snapchat spectacles, for example, people are starting to use them. When you're walking around with the new specs on, you've got to be mindful of your per personal and private security like you could be showing where you are at that given time and leaving yourself at risk. You're talking about privating you know photos but you want to keep them yourself but still that information is there so let's say a website like Facebook how much do they own of that? So that is a really scary thought and in the documentary we talked to this guy called Max Schrems he's an activist and he took this legal case against Facebook he asked them for his own personal data he got what he got back was basically his Facebook activity over the course of three years. He right. wasn't a very active user and he printed it off and it was a stack load of pages. It was over 1,300 pages. And this was just the data that Facebook had on him, not even the metadata. So it is quite frightening to think, you know, what Facebook knows about us. But ultimately, we're, we are responsible for what we post online. So we need to be aware about you know, where it's going and what's going to happen to it. I know a lot of people get quite scared sometimes when they look at, you know, advertising beside Facebook pages or they look at, you know, their Gmail all of a sudden. It's like, oh my God, that's something that yeah, I Googled yeah. or all that. Is that scary in your eyes or do you think it's something that uh, is, is just kind of part of, part of advertising now and we should just get used to it? No, and lots of the different developments are useful to us, but at the end of the day, we're handing over something that's a very valuable commodity. So we, there is a trade-off there. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of people who are uncomfortable about it too. You know, the idea that you're being tracked. Yeah. That you know, when you log on to Google, a little cookie is deposited and it can follow what you're doing and then send you lots of examples of red shoes that you might be looking for. If you want to get rid of something, there are ways to do it as well, aren't there? Like through, you know, you can get stuff, rid of stuff on Google if you want to, if you apply to do that. Yeah, well, if you see something you're not happy about, whether that's on Facebook or Twitter, you can report these mm -hmm. pieces of content and the platform will take action.